right here. Control them politically. 
Children in Boston will get a good education when we have nurturing adults in our building. And, and by that I mean headmasters, assistant headmasters, teachers, lunch mothers, custodians. Every adult in the building should be a nurturing adult because we pay them with our tax dollars. They're required to do that. In the words of Fortune magazine, uh, quote, the number one indicator of success for a child is a good relationship with a nurturing adult, end quote. The community must be involved in creating master plans for how to rebuild our schools. Almost 75% of our school buildings are crumbling. The reason there are no libraries in a lot of our elementary schools, it is because our schools have not had a capital plan to improve our schools. And so older schools that are crumbling, that have had low maintenance or no maintenance at all, continue to be in those conditions, and our kids have to go to them because we have no other choice. Community programs must, be, must support learning for our children, both academically and historically. And by historically, I mean historically in context with our community. Our children must learn the history of our community. They must learn who have contributed to the, our community. They must learn who their forefathers were and what their community has been all about. We must value that. We must create wealth in our community to satisfy and sustain programs and institutions that have great value for us and our children. And by that I mean one example. We've had a program at Freedom House, which was called Project Reach, of which many of these young people who was put on this event are responsible for. And that program existed for a number of years, and finally it just went away. The reason it went, excuse me, the reason it went away, that's another conference. The reason it went away is because everyone said there was no money to sustain the program, there was no money to run the program. All of a sudden, the money from foundations or wherever we went for money dried up. That program, if you look at the example of these young people who were put on this program, was an example of something that was extremely valuable for this community and its young people, and it no longer exists. We as a community must take responsibility for that. We must not expect others to do for us what we're not willing to do for ourselves. And finally, uh, there are people in our community uh, who do a great job of telling our history. And, you know, we saw some of that last night, for those of you who attended last night. But we seem to have a very difficult job predicting our future. And I'll tell you, it isn't so difficult, folks, because if you look at what's happening to our youngsters in high school, and you can look at one school where no 10th grader passed the MCAS. And you can look at middle schools where 73% of the 8th graders fail the, uh, the math test. Uh, you can predict the future because you know what's going to happen to those kids when they graduate. You can clearly predict the future for them because nothing will happen for them unless we take the measures to correct that. Uh, in my view, collectively, the community are responsible for the schools in our community. It, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't flow that we're spending that much money and someone else, the union, all the other entities get to tell us how our schools are run. We are responsible for making sure in one voice that everyone knows who is politically <coughs> responsible or otherwise that here's our standards for how we want our schools to run and insist upon it because it's our tax dollars. Okay, we have a comment in the audience right here, this gentleman. <coughs> Americans. 
to address a couple of issues. Um, there is an overall battle going on around public education and whether it should exist. So all the fallout you see now and all the things that you've talked about is in the midst of that battle. Um, so we talk about sending our kids to private schools and some of us are able to afford to do that. But there are many of us who cannot afford to do that. And so when public schools no longer exist, what happens to those children? So I think as I was a graduate from Dorchester High, I remember at the age of 16 having elders who talked to me about the importance of being part of a community who supported education and why education was important. As you heard some of the panelists and some of the folks in the audience talk about, that no longer exists. As we sit and see this group of uh, folks over here who don't have children and may not even be thinking about putting their children into the Boston Public Schools or any public school system, what is their role in making education the best for our children? As we sit and see the folks who are dissatisfied on this side about their experiences with the school system, what is their role in improving education for children? And as we see the folks who sit in the middle who are satisfied or somewhat satisfied with what's happening in the Boston Public Schools, what is their role for improving education for children? As well as the panelists and the people who are put on this conference, what are our roles, all of our roles, in improving education for children? And one, I believe we have to have a community sense and communicate that community sense of the importance of education to all of our children. I also believe we need to look at the power structures that are in place and question whether they are the right power structures and whether they are making the right decisions for the children that need our majority in the school system. Um, for me as a parent, I want to see teachers in the classroom who know how to teach to the style of my child's learning who sits in front of them. I want to see multiple ways that my child can learn within that classroom, not one sectioned way. I want to see that my child has every opportunity to learn while they sit in that classroom. Not because I chose to bus her to another part of the city and she still be segregated in a classroom where she doesn't have the same opportunity to learn. So we need to think about also how they put in this master plan and when those new schools will be going. And whether those new schools are the opportunity, as one of the parents in the um, audience talked about, is to have neighborhood schools. So what is the whole power structure that is in place that is playing out in the larger scheme that is going to affect our individual children. Um, we need to think about those things. We need to have conversations about those things. And we need to talk about how we as a community have a collective role of making some impact on those decisions so that all of our children who are in public schools or private schools get the best opportunity they can to learn. Okay, we're gonna shift gears for a minute and I know you have some questions. Because what theme seems to be coming up over and over again 
is this power structure. What power do we have? What role do we play in creating it? As we all know, we once used to have an elected school board committee. We decided who made the decisions that affected our children's education. And that was taken away from us. However, I'm sorry? When we had the opportunity, again, to go to the polls and vote that we wanted that right back, it failed. So then we now have to ask ourselves, and I'm going to ask the panelists to speak to this, who do we blame? Because we can get into an easy blame game and the money and they're wasting it, but when we have opportunities presented to us to take back some form of control, what do we do? And that goes back to Black Politics 101. We are not using our vote. Our vote is our voice and we're not using it. Ms. McGuire? <laughs> I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell it like it is. Okay. Yes. Yes. Julio and I are going to say the same thing. My father died a year ago, just two months short of 100, and all his life, as a clergyman, a minister, since World War I, he worked to end lynching to get us to have the power not to spend our money where we didn't work to make sure everybody got a good public school education. When my sister was offered a scholarship to Thea, he said, no, we have to go to public school because that's where most of us go. And uh, we wanted to be good. We can't say anything when we're not there, so we all went to public school. But when we gave up the right to vote, the classic pattern that was used in Africa, when Europe underdeveloped Africa, was to get the clergy follow with the soldiers and take over the power of our minds. Mm -hmm. They used our clergy to sell us down the river, both times. 1991, when Ray Flynn, who was against affirmative action, against gay rights, against uh, married women when they got divorced using their maiden name, against Roxbury Community College, our minister supported Ray Flynn's initiative, the Home Rule Petition, which was sent to the State House with the Boston delegation and the city council's vote, except for the black members. And we lost four of the six local black elected officials. So we got out of the habit of getting power. And that was really part of why you all are using these, these new words which weren't in the lexicon then. There wasn't any charter schools. They don't talk about charter schools in Wellesley and Newton and Brookline. They don't talk about choice out there. They know better. They don't talk about neighborhood schools. Do you have neighborhood jobs on the big dig? Do you have neighborhood capital to get a decent mortgage for your house? Do you, is your neighborhood run by, are those teachers going to be from your neighborhood? Are you deciding the curricula? Are you deciding the instruments, the measurement instruments to test your children? Is the SAT, the MCATs, the, L, the law school admissions tests, the medical school, are those neighborhood? Don't get fooled by that. Pri I've been public and private. That's right. It doesn't make any difference. My daughter's principal, and the John Winthrop, sent her to a private school. And there were no black teachers, just as there were in public schools then, with a handful of us out of 7,000. You are going backwards because when the petition came up six years later to vote whether or not to reestablish an elected school committee, what did Mayor Menino do? but go right to the ministers again. What is wrong with us? When you use our church against us and you cut to the moral center of a community, you can't do things without the just use of power. And you can't win if you just look out for your own kids. Folks, the kids you don't look out for marry your children. They live next to you. They have road rage next to you. There is no running, there ain't no place to hide. I cried out to the Lord to hide my face. He cried out, there's no hiding place down here. There is no neighborhood school. There's no neighborhood money. The money comes from the federal government. It comes mostly from your local tax dollars, and some comes from the state. And how it get a, gets a portion is in direct ratio to your power and your voice. In direct ratio to your face. You don't let a stranger teach your child. Your child's mind is the one thing outside of their soul that nobody can take from you. And look who's filling our minds. I don't even have a television in my bedroom. 
There will be no woman in my bedroom for my husband but me. Ah. Right. The only thing that can, I raise my children without a television in the house. They tell me they were culture deprived, but even to this day at 43 and 46, when they look at TV in their homes, they have a book in their lap. You can't, the revolution, they used to tell us, will not be televised. Or it could be. If we own the television stations, if we write the scripts, if we hold the camera like Spike Lee and the lady who did a, the Daughters of the Dust, but it is not a simple answer that you can go to a private school. What kind of private school? Who is there? If my child has Down syndrome, can they go there? If my child has spina bifida, Bifida, if my child has cerebral palsy, if my child is what they used to call severely retarded, can they go to a private school? They go to church with everybody else. They play on the street and jump up with them. You've got to watch what they've done to divide, to conquer. You can't go to a private school that doesn't have a black staff. You won't have the black experience, the Latino experience, the Asian experience, and the white experience, which is so twisted, it's really the experience of wealthy white men in your schools unless you are calling the tune. Right now, you are not. The top staff in this school system with a white superintendent, not because he's white, but because what he did when he had a chance to appoint, he appointed all white and one Asian male. No Latino males. No women. Where was the League of Women Voters? Where was the Massachusetts Women's Political Caucus? Where was our voice? We can't just watch the NBA. We've got to watch what goes on in City Hall and back up Gareth Saunders and back up Charles Yancey. So when they look up there like there was when they, they didn't want any more black firemen and policemen, we filled those. We filled it up with Vulcan, the black firemen and policemen. We can do it when we want, but when it comes to our children, we wait till the crisis. You, you can't wait till the crisis to organize. You gotta know who has what strengths. You don't let strangers teach your children. You go to your child's school when you don't have to. Visit all this, everyone in here should adopt a school, a public school, and a private school. Private means a vast range, as people said here, 20,000, that's low, baby. Private schools cost as much as universities. Yes, that's right, tell them. You wanna talk independent. Go out to Lincoln Sudbury where they spend $11,750 per year per pupil. You don't have to have a, a separate building for a library. You can take a classroom and make a library. We don't have librarians because they cut it out of the budget. I can put a library in a corner. I used to have in my classroom 42 kids, 36 seats, and me and the kidney shaped reading table. I had a library because the city had the bookmobile that came to our school. They cut it out. Who do you think got hurt? Not the children who have private libraries at home and get these kind of magazines. No, it's the kids like me who want welfare. We didn't get the books. I got the book jackets, the plaster around my books so the kids would know what a book looked like. And when I took them to the South End Library, I almost lost my job because I didn't get permission from Beacon Street. You cannot do anything unless you get yourself an elected school committee and every one of you young people here, you run for every goddamn office we have in this state every time. You build power by doing it. You run your friends, your ex-boyfriends, your ex-girlfriends, your ex-in-laws, your neighbors, they will come and vote for you. You may not win, but even when you're losing, you're winning because you're building a base. We have lost, we have lost the, the, the fire in our belly that three generations ago, they were killing us to do. They didn't want us to vote. And my grandmother used to tell me, anything white folks don't want you to have, you need. And anything they give you, you damn sure don't need. We don't need cocaine and basketball hoops. We need libraries. Those tests your children take are based upon you reading two and three hours a day. Yes, I love TV, but I'd rather make love to my husband than watch some white people make love, make money, and make war. All right? You gotta do it yourself. So you want to change your school. You're in a private school, get on the board of trustees and ask why there are no black teachers and look closely at that curriculum. Shady Hill, Milton Academy, I've been to all of them. Buckingham, Brown, and Nichols. How many black men? How many Asian men? Are you opening your mouths when you go to those private schools? Does the curriculum reflect your history? I doubt it. Those same children come and run your schools because they've had the curriculum that those tests are giving. And if you don't read it, you don't know it. Kids will come from 
Jamaica, they'll come from Barbados, and they'll study for the test. But that doesn't mean they're going to make it in this society. And I'll tell you, watch your technology. I'd rather have my kid play an oboe than use a computer. I'd rather have her play the saxophone like John Coltrane than play a keyboard. I'm going to tell you because there's something to us beside the technology. There's her heart and her soul, and I see it going. I don't see kids playing guitars anymore. They don't play music. They play a tape recorder. They play a CD. We're not learning. We don't have orchestras. I went to the Dearborn. I had violin lessons from Mr. Saka for 25 cents a week, and I lived in Orchard Park. I was the third black family in there. It was all white. You watch those language, the neighborhood schools, the charter schools. That money should have gone to the Cambridge public schools. And it, should, it would have been targeted had you had more of a voice. And you can vote in Cambridge. And you can run for office in Cambridge. You can't do it in Boston. As a result, we're not running for anything. We not only don't run for school committee because we don't have it, we hardly run, a few of us, we hardly run for...